Hey everybody, Nerdy Transformed here again, and today I'm kind of doing a really, really big one. It's my kind of Christmas gift to you all, or a holiday gift. But in my house we celebrate Christmas, so I'm going to say Christmas gift. So anyway, this is a Transformers Cybertron, Cybertron, or Primus, whatever you prefer to call them. And if you don't know, Primus is the robot form for Cybertron, as all of Cybertron is actually a giant robot. So yeah, Transformers Cybertron finally gave us Cybertron itself as a toy. But that's not what introduced me to, to, to Concept of Primus, though. I was first introduced to it by the Transformers Ultimate Guide by Simon, okay, Simon Furman. There we go. The Ultimate Guide. This came out in, I would want to say, 2004? Or somewhere around there, because it ends with the... The furthest this book gets is Energon era, so Cybertron show wasn't in America yet. But, let's see, page, here it is. As you see on this page, it actually talks about Primus, who was a concept in the comic books. And my god, the illustration on him was beautiful. I wanted a toy of him so bad when I first saw this. And then a year or two later, Cybertron. So as you can see, this is a big, a big planet toy to go alongside the Unicron that came out in Armada and Energon. And unlike the Unicron, he actually has these little pieces that stick out, these stands. They are, they are unfortunately not removable, they're just attached. But, you see, as you can see, it lets him stand just fine as a giant sphere. And there's so much detail in him. Like, I can't even go over all You can actually see a city here with a little road to give you like an idea of scale of how big he is. And it's that little road, and this is a road for Transformers, this isn't a road for humans, so... And you also see some cities up here in gold, also some, like, framework under there. And you also have these big towers that are meant to be, uh, Minicon ports, of course. If you don't know, Primus is basically, like, if Unicron's the being of chaos, Primus is the being of order and life. So... Yeah, you, the chaos being came into our universe as Unicron, the being of order and life came into our universe as Primus, and shut down and turned to Cybertron. Where life began on him as the ancient Cybertronians. You can see in their city there, just a lot of cool details. Just all over, even on the bottom. Granted, a lot of the stuff like the feet and the guns are on the bottom, but... And you do have this big rivet here where these cans pop out. You can also see uh, the capital. I believe it's isn't it the capital of Cybertron. I don't remember what it's exactly called, but there is. I think the book actually talks about that. So yeah, it's a, it's got a lot of cool details for both Cybertron fans and just fans of Transformers in general, or like comic book fans. One thing I really like is the Minicon ports. They are just kind of these huge towers sticking straight up. At least they try and make them look like they were something besides Minicon ports, but. I'm not sure what they're supposed to be. Same here, this one, this one's a lot more just a mini port sticking out right here. And yeah, you can kind of hold like a bowling ball because he has this big hole right here. Which is where this piece moves. But you can see just a lot of detail. I mean, I could keep going for an hour over all the details. All the silver and mini- there's an air mini port, there's a Cybertron plant key. So yeah, he does have some gimmicks. But before we go over those, I want to go over his accessories. One is the Omega Lock. Which you can actually plug the uh, four planet keys into, or any keys actually. It doesn't really do anything as far as I know. It, it They don't activate anything, I don't believe. I think you just sit there and look nice. But you can plug in all four keys and it is a good fit. And your accessory comes with is actually the head of Unicron. Which is pretty interesting. It's got, it is self house has a lot of nice details. There's no articulation in it, but you can see instead of his neck you have all these tendrils coming out. One of them being damaged, like flat out chopped off here. And you actually see just under his head there, another one looks like it got pretty scraped up. The back of his helmet has all these dinges and big cracks. His horn, one of them is completely broken off. The other one's chipped at the top. And his face, he's just missing half his face, leaving him with this Terminator look. And his eye is not glowing, so it kind of gives him this dead look. It's really cool considering, like in G1, I think there was actually like a battle, like on his head, used as a battlefield. So, it's a really cool sculpt extra to get. Especially since I don't think Unicron was really a thing in Transformers Cybertron, but I don't remember the show that well. So, let's get back to Cybertron. Uh, as far as the gimmicks go, the Minicon ports don't do anything, they're just there because it was a Unicron trilogy. 
And of course the cyber plant key makes the guns pop out. I don't have a cyber plant key on me, but it's just a simple pressure piece. So I'm just gonna use my nail scissors here and it makes the gun pop out. It also usually makes the gun, the cans pop forward, but the spring on mine's kind of worn out. I can show you better with this one where you can see the cans are actually in. And then here when you press it, causes that to pop out and causes that to pop up. So it gives Cybertron some firepower. That makes him look like a turret from Portal or something. And it's a pretty cool look. Now you can give him some more firepower, but this starts getting into the transfer transformation. So how you go about doing that, oh sorry, is you take the Omega Lock, and you might notice this giant thing here. This is where all the gimmicks pops in, a light up gimmick, because when you poke, press the Omega Lock into there, it causes it to light up, as you can see with a little red LED. Looks a bit better in person. So what you're going to do, just kind of take hold of it. Make sure you don't let your hands get caught in these little two half pieces over here. Because when you grab this, you can see it actually starts sliding, you can see these two pieces coming out. When you start pushing it in, you're going to get a sound effect too. Let me show you exactly what that did. As you can see, the two half parts are kind of split off. It's also supposed to cause these guns to flip out. But again, toy's a little old. I mean, this toy is 10 years old. I got him 10 years ago on Christmas 2006, so... Considering I've had this toy for a decade, and he still works, I'm kind of glad. Now you can have it just prep them forward, but what you're meant to do is take the upper pieces, swivel them downward, and flip the guns in to give them kind of like a battle station mode. And there is a full form of this, and this is basically one of those battle stations, kind of like the G1 toys, where it's just a halfway transformation, but they decided to call it some kind of mode. Oh yeah, and if you're curious about scale of Cybertron, here he is next to Deluxe Hotshot. So you can see the planet itself is about as a little bit taller than a, a Deluxe from the time. And to give you another size comparison, here is most of Combined War Superion, who's quite a bit taller, as you can see. Comes about to about the waist of Superion. So let's get those two out of the way. So for full battle station mode, you're then going to grab this piece, which is just a panel kind of just sitting there. Come under here, grab this panel, flip it down to expose what will be his knees. Come to the other side, grab the bottom, and you can see it starts flipping out using the leg joints. Oh yeah, these are some pretty well ratchets too, so I'm just going to warn you now. And you're basically going to straighten it all out. It's like you're folding down his legs, which you pretty you are actually. Make sure you fold these shin pieces in to give it some more room. And that's what you have now. And finally to complete the battle station mode, once again take the Omega Lock, put it in this port here, lights up again, and this time instead of pushing something, you're spinning it. And you see the Omega Lock will spin in the opposite direction. Not always forward, you just want it where it's kind of the flat parts facing forward. And you can see it rotate those guns out. I'll try to show this a bit better here. Just tilt it's kind of facing flat way forward and see it rotates the guns out. Oh yeah, once you have the Mega Lock out this far, these kind of spin on their own. And they do lock in about here. There we go. Without, when you take the lock out, it locks in a lot easier. So there's the exact spot. These, you can actually see the city here, where the city I showed you before. It's actually attached to these cannons. You push on the city. It actually pushes the cans forward. This is one of those gimmicks I wish Unicron had. And I don't have my Unicron anymore because I sold them because I didn't really like the figure. And finally, these little pieces here, you can see this little crevice, push in on it, and you'll start folding out these claws. And you just fold it out on two different hinges. And the claws themselves are hinged too. As you can see, a little claw, and it's got a little mini con port. Same over here. Just kind of got to push it out. Keep on folding it out. And it gives them these two little claws. Now these claws in the cans are also used in his robot mode, same with the ones in his legs, but this is where you have what the instructions called his battleship mode or his battle station mode. And this one's a lot more believable because you do have all these guns. You got these down, you can see down here what the guns are attached to will be his arms. You do got, I believe you're actually supposed to have these up 
now like this. And it is a semi-believable battle station. I mean, you got the rockets down here, got the little claws, got all this down in here. I mean, you got five weapons here. Like, what we got here? A Gatling gun, a rocket, uh, looks kind of like a little rock missile pod, laser gun, just a bunch of stuff. You can also open these up, which are just his feet. Doesn't show anything, but you can pretend they're like missile silos or something. You got the two cannons on either side. You got a giant cannons in the back with little rockets on the top. I mean, compared to a lot of other made-up modes, this is actual believable battle station. Oh yeah, you can plug the mega lock into here if you wish. So, like I said, compared to a lot of the other modes like this, this is actually a pretty believable battle station, except for the fact that it's a planet. I guess you could see this going against Unicron's planet mode, trying to destroy him. But yeah, because if you grab him and lift it up, you can see the bottom of the battle station is basically the robot mode. So the battle station is once again kind of one of those halfway transform modes and they decide to call it something else. Uh, you do have joints here because you do got all these hinges in the claws. So you could do a bunch of stuff with that if you wish. It's, it's one of those things I wish Unicron has something like this. Just all these cool little gimmicks going through. But there's not much more to talk about with this mode so let's go ahead and hop onto the robot mode. Go ahead and take these claws and fold them back up. They're pretty easy to get back in there. You're just gonna fold in the claw first, then fold in the arm, then fold in the whole thing. And it folds away, tucks away nice and tight. Um, camera's being a little unstable. Now, the this is most of the robot here. Go ahead and take the mega lock once again and finish spinning it all the way around. You can see the guns are now pointing straight upward. Same on this side, all the way up. Go ahead and take these little panels, flip them up, those are his feet. Take the whole thing, flip it around, grab the waist, and just do your best to try to turn this around. There's a lot of really close spots, but you can get it going and turning it until these two yellow pieces line up right here. Uh, go ahead and take the legs. Start back here and just go ahead and split them all the way up. And now let you get him standing. And these are on a little swivel so you can get him with his feet flat. Go ahead and fold the shin pieces down out of the way. His legs are pieced back. There we go. Get him standing straight. Come down to the arms here, and the hands do extend out, and you can adjust the fingers and thumb however you want, but the main thing is just to get the thumb out, or the hand slide out. Then come to the top here, flip the cans around, you're going to have to twist it to get them over the shoulders, but yeah. flip it around, twist, and down. Now all that's left is the shoulder blades, this chest piece, and the head, which is all done in one go. As you can see, there's one more Mega Lock port right in the center of his chest. So you can take it, push it in, and what you're going to do is you're going to push it upward. I'm going to try to show this all in one. As you can see, it's starting to go. Come on. There go. Come on, you got this. There we go. Now there's meant to be a sound effect and some lights in his eyes for this. But I think the batteries for this side died. Either that or the sound chip broke. I don't know which. It is a 10 year old toy. But it would basically his lights would start flash, his eyes would start flashing kind of like what Unicron does. And there you have Primus in his completed robot mode. And you can see he's quite a magnificent looking thing. Uh, for size comparison, there's Hotshot again. Remember the plant mode was just a bit taller than him, so the plant mode was originally about this tall. It's kind of about double in size. And yes, he's even bigger than one of the new combiners. Not by much, but he is a head taller than Superion here. Oh yeah, and here's that little Unicron head. Yeah. And, a, and I've looked at this. This is actually about the same, the same size as the Armada Unicron head, so to give you an idea, Unicron was about this tall, so... He's a little bit shorter than a unicron, if I remember correctly. And once again, we get out the dusty old book. Oh, wrong page. Here we go. 
you can see what he looked like in the comics, what he looks like in Transformers Cybertron. Definitely a different look. It kind of looks like if you were to fold down the shoulder pieces here, you could actually get pretty close. And he does have the over-shoulder cannon, just in a bit different. This is more like a scorpion up cannon, while here we got more of a... More of, like, two overhead shoulder cannons. But... It's definitely Primus. The head is pretty close to the comics. And just the fact that we got a Primus toy at all is pretty nice. So let's just look at all this detail. He is, like, full of ratchets and details and gimmicks. And he is just everything that was great about the Unicron trilogy. I will admit he's not probably not the best Transformer, giant Transformer out there. But he is one of the nicest, I think. And just sheer amount of paint and look. And... Please ignore any dust you might see. These like these black spikes up here do have a lot of dust on them. It's hard to get all the dust out of those. I've wiped him everywhere I could, but there's still little bits here and there. But like I said, he's just a magnificent looking thing to have on your shelf with everything fully out. So, let's just look, get a good look at everything. Starting with the head, you can see he's got silver paint. Unfortunately, due to the light-up gimmick, it does mean he's kind of left with dead eyes. But it also kind of works considering he's supposed to be asleep. Even in Cybertron, he when he woke up, he was still kind of sleeping. He's got a big old gemstone and a lot of yellow paint for the chin and the, around the stone. And he's even got little Optimus ear thick do lollies. The chest is a big old broad muscular just... It makes him look really powerful. Just a big chunk of center plastic where all the electronics are, basically. Uh, if you want to look at the back, it's just uh, leftover bits. The only thing that really bugs me about his transformation is this panel is just kind of left here. It doesn't do anything. Like, at least these big shoulder mountain pieces, I can say, make, beef them up a bit and give them the cannons. This piece is literally just a flap to complete the, uh, the planet mode. But he does it, he handles it a lot better than Unicron did. He looks like an actual planet in planet mode, where Unicron kind of looks like some robot bits with a half a planet on top. And his robot mode doesn't have shell everywhere. Granted, he has these two pig, these two pieces, but at least they actually look like they're doing something. Oh yeah, and they are kind of bouncy if you want. Same with the shoulder pieces. Uh, you see some nice silver and yellow, all the little details. There's just so many little intricate details all over him. Arms got some silver. Uh, lower arms got a little bit yellow to help break it up. Some blue and silver here, and they and they did pick a good color gray to kind of give him like a metallic look. Enough on the hands, but they are a nice black. Legs get a little bit of silver and yellow on the crotch there. A little bit of gold, bronze on the chest and side pieces here. And the legs are basically just using the details from planet mode. Most of what was ex the legs really are just the planet mode. The only thing that's really exposed is this yellow bit, but we can see that in the battle station mode. Most of the new details are the arms and the chest and the head. I might be going through this kind of quick, but it's kind of hard to just say, ooh, look at that detail for 20 minutes, because I really will do that for 20 minutes. Uh, as far as articulation goes, his head is on a swivel, and it does swivel almost all the way around. You can only get it going that far, but still, considering he has electronics in it, he can go pretty far with the head. Uh, shoulders do have full movement, but the kibble does get in the way a lot, but you can get the arm going up that far. And it does go forward that far up. It doesn't go back and you can't get this out of the way. Um, if you do want, if you're worried about this kibble here, you could take the guns, fold them back in. And these are all on ratchets too. Like there's a lot of ratchets in this thing. Then take the mega lock and push it back up. And he could collapse that, almost like a turtle shell on his back, if you so prefer. Granted, you're going to have this big old circle behind him, but if you don't like the big old pieces sticking up here, you could put them away. It doesn't fix the arm at all. You can get it going at like a side back a bit, but you can get that going if you so wish. You give him a big old turtle shell. And it kind of works. I mean, it still looks like Primus. I personally prefer the pieces out, so... Yeah, all those clicking pieces. Flip the guns back out. But it is a thing you can do if you so wish. This piece does not have to be transformed. Technically speaking, this back part does not need to be transformed at all to achieve his robot mode. 
So as far as it's really back to the articulation. It's got ratchets going outward, going forward, ratcheted elbow. Unfortunately, the elbow swivel is below the elbow, but it does mean you can kind of get this. I'm a firing my laser. Especially with the Omega Lock in too. Sorry for picking up and putting down the camera a lot. I don't really have a good place to review this easily. I have no idea how I'm going to review Fort Max. But you can see you kind of get... With the elbow swivel, it does allow you to kind of get this forward blasting thing going. It looks pretty badass, too. Alright. And this below the swivel, the hands do not rotate, but they are individually finger uh, articulated. The thumb is just on a hinge, but you can get it kind of going outward and, and, and closed fisted. Each of the fingers has two joints. You got a hinge at the base, and then you have a, a bend in the middle. And they do go back that far, and they go inward that far, and then make the closed fist with the fingers. So, and they are individually jointed too. They they are separate joints, so you can have each finger doing something different. You can even get the middle finger going if you so wish, and what and which I do do that occasionally. You can get the middle finger going. It's kind of sad. He's smaller than Fortress Max, the new Fortress Maximus, but he's a lot better made. I will admit, having the fingers all the way out, they look stupidly long. So I usually keep them close fisted, or uh, that kind of looks cool. But yeah, most of the time when I'm displayed, I usually just have them in the basic stance, or have them in the gun forward pose. Let's remove that for a moment. Uh, due to transformation, it does have the the weight swivel. And it does look fine. It does it, it does look perfectly fine. It doesn't look like anything's broken since it's in the center for the most part. It can go it can go all the way around, of course, but you might have to mess with the legs position to get it go all the way around if you want. But you can do it if you so wish. He does have a really strong ratchet in the leg, of course, to keep him standing. But it's still soft enough to move around pretty easily. It goes out about that far. It let the ratchet's a lot stronger going forward. It can, you can do a 90 degree forward leg. And given that even with the kibble, you can get the legs going backward a bit. Especially in tune with the waist swivel. So you can get going back about that far using the waist swivel. Ugh. These are really strong ratchets. Okay. You do get a swivel right here. And it's minorly ratcheted, not a loud one. And you get a really loud ratchet in the knee. That goes just over 90 degrees. And the feet, as mentioned, are on a slight little swivel here. So you can get the feet so that way you don't have to keep his legs together. Like so, like this. Which you can do that, but it looks a little odd. But thanks to that, you can put it one ratchet out each. And get his still have his feet solid on the ground. And in a genius way, they actually use the kibble of the planet as his heels. Uh, it doesn't mean he's sitting there, he's literally standing on a city. So I feel bad for those citizens. Oh man, this has been a long one, huh? But yeah, that is Primus. There's a lot going on with this figure. I think that's basically all the gimmicks. A lot of the gimmicks are used mainly either in planet mode or in his battle station mode. The only new one is the uh, lights and sounds, which you couldn't hear. Oh yeah, these are these up here are missiles, but because I don't take care of missiles too well, I have lost them. I'm not sure how they're. they're you can actually see a trigger back there. This little bump right here is the trigger for the missiles, and I've lost them with time. I don't remember where they went, but he does have missile launchers. These up here don't do anything. They're just. Once they sprung out, that's the end of their gimmick. But yeah, this I would consider the pinnacle of Transformer Cybertron. Well, maybe Cybertron Optimus Prime, but this is kind of the how to do a giant gimmick toy because he keeps all the articulation. He has he has more articulation than the new Fortress Maximus still. And I know he's a bit smaller than that one. He's only about like half the height of that thing, but he. I gotta say is my much more preferred supreme size figure or titan size figure. I believe they were called supreme class back then. I'm not sure. Oh, you can fold the knee guards up if you wish. I prefer kind of having them all the way down, but you can have them up if you want. But yeah, that's Primus. It's 
there's a lot going on, but it's also easy to run through everything. To be honest, he's just a really good looking figure. That's why I keep him, is he's just really nice looking. He's got bulk in all the right ways. He's just a really good looking robot, despite transforming him from a planet. The legs are a little oddly shaped, and he does have all that back kibble. But I just enjoy just messing around with him. And he's just a good lot of fun. So, if you like Primus, if you like Transformer Cybertron, if you like giant Transformers, I would easily recommend him. Uh, as far as missing parts, keep an eye out for the head. If you want Unicron head, it is a cool little thing. Make sure you get this Omega Lock, because you really do need him to transform. You can force the joints without it, but I would not recommend that. I guess you could maybe use like a pin or something if you don't have it. But make sure you get this Omega Lock, because it makes things a lot easier. Um, look out for the missiles if you want. But as far as that goes, I think that's all the pieces that come off. Maybe the, I think the claws pop off. Hold on, let's see. The little tiny claws on this. Do these pop off? Uh, looks like they could. Okay, yeah, look out for those little claws. I think those might be able to pop off. Oh, yeah, wait. Uh, let's see. This piece has popped off on me before. This butt piece. It doesn't do it in robot mode, but in, in plant mode, you'll notice the piece is missing. The feet pop off, though. Make sure those feet are there, because without that, you're not going to be able to have a Primus that can stand. So, watch out for the butt flap, watch out for the feet, watch out for the Mega Lock. And, of course, also watch out for Unicron, because if you want a Unicron ahead, this is a really neat little piece. I guess so that way you can do uh, Shakespeare. Yeah, there we go. He can do he can do Shakespeare now. But I think all the air pieces stay on pretty well. I think maybe the guns can pop off, but again, as far as I know, it's mainly the butt flap and the feet and the Omega Lock. Those are the big pieces that, went, if went missing, you would be kind of screwed in one way or the other. Without the feet, he can't stand. Without the butt flap, he doesn't look right in Cybertron mode. And without the Mega Lock, you can't transform this thing easily. So, yeah. I highly, highly recommend this if you really like Transform Cybertron, if you really like the comics, if you just want a Primus to go with your Unicron. He is an excellent figure. I can recommend this to almost any Transformer fan just due to how well he's made. And I'm so glad he's survived the past 10 years. So, I hope you all have a happy holidays, I hope you have a Merry Christmas, and I hope yours is as merry as mine was 10 years ago and it is today. Happy holidays from Nerdy Transformed.